Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, that was a little weak. We'll take your work on it, okay? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. May we, like the Magi, follow that light, the light that came into the world to scatter the darkness and bring good news to all. Amen. Amen. It will not. 
As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and the horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's song is Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6, and we'll read it responsibly. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty. God reveals himself in glory. O God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heaven and the earth from above. To witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my loyal followers. Those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the righteous of his cause. For God himself is judge. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. Since today is Valentine's Day, I'm going to talk about relationships. Our relationships with each other are important. 
They can bring us nourishment, security, and joy. In many ways, they make us whole. In Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus taking his friends Peter, James, and John to the top of a mountain. When they reach the summit of the mountain, the clothes Jesus wore turned brilliant white, and beside him was Elijah and Moses. Soon a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke directly to the three disciples, announcing that Jesus was its Son, and Jesus was the Beloved. We learn much about the relationships between Jesus, God, and the three disciples in this short story. We learn that Jesus has a direct relationship with God. And because the voice spoke directly to the disciples, they also have a direct relationship with God. These relationships are important and become the foundation for the gospel. The pandemic caused by COVID-19 has been hard for us. Most of us thought this would be over in a month or two. I don't think many of us believe it would last a year or even longer. It has made it difficult for us to see our friends and relatives face to face. And many of us have stopped going outside the home unless absolutely necessary. We have learned how to stop online, shop online and order pickup at restaurants. But these have not soothed our longing for relationships. The same has been true for Epiphany. We have learned to hold services online using Facebook. Our meetings and other gatherings are held using Zoom. But these do not fully nourish our need for relationships. But we don't let that stop us. As Paul says, we press on. We have pastoral care teams at Epiphany calling members to check on them. Others who call members just because they feel called to do so. And people have even learned to use Facebook comments during Sunday coffee hour, daily live streams, and supper, supper song and praise as a way to show each other we care. Our stewardship committee at Epiphany is called the Committee on Gratitude because the foundation of Christian stewardship is gratitude. We are thankful for all the gifts that God has given us during our lifetime and we seek ways to use these God gifts for God's ministry. But even more than gratitude, stewardship is about relationships. Our relationships with each other, with God, and with ourselves. It is for this reason that many of our Committee on Gratitude events focus on stewardship of relationships. We saw this when we hand-delivered bread to all who pledged their support for Epiphany's 2021 ministry. To accomplish this, we needed many bakers and drivers. To no one's surprise, every person we asked to help enthusiastically said yes. I have received many emails from drivers and bakers telling me of the joy they felt as they supported this ministry. Because of COVID, most people were home and the drivers were able to meet parish members face to face and talk. It has been nearly a year since many of them had last seen each other. It felt good and it brought joy. Giving bread was more than a thank you. It was an opportunity to reconnect our community at Epiphany. This was stewardship of relationships at its best. Do you remember exchanging Valentine cards as a child? Oh yeah. <laughs> as children, we didn't know it, but we were learning about the importance of relationships. Many of us still honor Valentine's Day by giving cards and flowers 
or by sharing a special meal. Valentine's Day reminds us how important we are to each other. So what does this mean for us today? There are many people, even at Epiphany, who will be spending their Valentine's Day home and alone. Think of the joy they would receive if you called them. Think of the joy you receive too. So if you have a friend you haven't talked to lately, now is a good time to call that person. Or you can send an email or a text. Such actions show you care and that you value your relationships with them. In today's message from Mark, we learn how relationships between God, Jesus, and the disciples became the basis for our Gospels. We heard about the joy people felt as they baked and delivered bread to fellow members of Epiphany. And we relived what it means to celebrate Valentine's Day. Our relationships with each other are important. Amen. Amen. The Nicene Creed is a statement of our belief, but it's also a way that we express our relationship with God. So in that spirit, let us pray together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Courtney, Nathine, Nancy Ellen, Chris, Olive, Randy, Suzanne, Christine, Doug, and Mike. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, 
remembering especially Marvin and Dottie, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God we, confess we confess that we have sinned sin against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also Just a quick announcement. Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday, and we will have three opportunities to begin our, our Lenten observance live in our courtyard at 7.30 a.m., at noon, again, live in our courtyard, and then at 7 p.m., live streamed on Facebook, just like we're doing now. So, three opportunities to begin our Lenten observance.
you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with saints and angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and soft rains fall gently on your fields. And may our kind and loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, keep you, and hold you in the palm of his hand this day and always. Amen. Amen.
I gotta tell you, when that uh, when that organ really kicked in and let loose, I got emotional. Yeah. Oh, that, one, that really touched me. And you can feel the vibration through the building. You can. The whole it's building it's shakes, so and, and you can feel the music. And yes. Whoo, wow. I know. Oh, that was good, good, good stuff. Good things. What a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Miss Emmy. Bye. Thank you. I love you too. We have our, our altar party coming and going, yes. and uh, yeah, it is uh, it is a blessed, blessed day. Well, we're kind of working and getting ourselves yeah, situated right. here, folks. Uh, right. As you probably have noticed, things are a little bit different today. Uh, Wormtail continues to haunt us, and our tech system kind of uh, had some hiccups this morning, but. Because this is the year of innovation, we always have a plan B and a plan C and a plan J. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to the offices of our great and good tech minister, Joseph Sable, we are online and we are here together. So uh, he had some more gray hairs now as a result of all this, but we are all here and we benefit from his gray hair. So <laughs> that's okay. Our new brother looks dashing. Yeah. You know, you got that whole George Clooney thing going. Well, there were a lot of power images all night. There all day, were. yeah, yesterday. Right. So I think we might have got hit with some some rolling power outage. It uh, it definitely hit wow, us. Wow! But yeah, great surprise. <laughs> oh. Well, how about that sermon from our postulant brothers and sisters? Yay. Was that not great? Thank you. Yeah, thank the you. The whole idea of our relationships. I mean, that's boy, that's what we're missing. That's what we really are just oh. We're hungry for it, right? The COVID, yeah. That was that great line you had in there, you know? It, it doesn't it doesn't soothe our longing for relationship. That just pulled at my heartstrings. That's really what it is. We're longing to be in relationship. So a good reminder for us. Oh, I'm so glad people are saying, yeah, I got my second shot. Yes. In line for my first shot. This is good progress. Trish, I saw your hubby got his shot the other day. That's awesome. Yeah, Peter, Peter, Peter. Let's hear it from Peter. Lots of love going through. Future Father Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that probably scares the daylights out of him, but it, it is, in fact, the trajectory he is on. Uh, good, good stuff. Lots of love. It is the day of love. It is the yes. day of love, exactly. I got my exactly. love socks on. Oh, look at those oh, love socks there. right there. That's a beautiful thing. My love socks. Happy Valentine's Day. You do look day. pretty amazing today, I have to say. <laughs> it's a good thing you're already married, otherwise I'd make a play for you. Um, for those of you who don't know, we are in fact married, so that's okay. Don't send me hate mail. <laughs> Just in case. Nobody Just in case. I never know. There might be somebody watching us for the first that's time. True. Going, what's with that creepy priest? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Oh, we are in fact married. <laughs> Let's move into birthdays, Let's, shall we? Yeah. Nice segue. <laughs> Today, February the 14th, is the birthday of our dear sister Roberta Cuomo. Oh, that's right. Roberta, happy birthday to you. She was actually our speaker on Wednesday at Supper Song and Praise and did an excellent job. Yeah. Uh, so Keegan Rasmussen has a birthday this week. Michael Wise has a birthday, and Mark Laker, who just yeah, he was here. Just looked. just boogied out the door okay. with his uh, adorable daughter Sylvia and uh, his wonderful wife Jen. Read for us today. Yes, the Lakers are amazing. Jeff Coleman has a birthday coming up. Although Jeff, as I'm looking at the list, I see we have the month and the day. You didn't give us the year, so we don't know what day it is, what year it is for you, Jeff. So no. I'm going to say you yeah, must be a very spry 85. Prove uh, <laughs> me wrong, I dare you. Some of us know exactly how old he is. I, I tease uh, Jeff because he's on our vestry. In fact, he's our junior warden, and he's a good friend. Um, and those other birthdays coming up this week. We do not have any anniversaries no. listed this week. So happy birthday to all of no you. No Valentine's Day anniversary. I know. It's just a strange place yeah, that we don't have a Valentine's yeah. Day anniversary. But uh, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, lots of people scheduled to get their shots here. Here, yeah, go. more and more shots are getting out there. So, low. that's good. Uh, yeah. You know, I had to bring my sock game today because I bring the sock game. So, how was everybody's week? There was some interesting weather this week. Did it? Yeah, 
bird. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's one thing when you're home, though, you don't have to worry about what you're commuting in. Because I know out here, rain is like a crazy deal, right? It is, it is. Okay, we were in the parking lot at Ikea yesterday yeah. in the middle of this wrath of God rainstorm, laughing that we could look in four directions around us and see no rain, but where we were, it was just downpouring. Monsoon rain. Right. Yeah. Welcome to Las Vegas, right. right? This year is not going to be the driest year on record. Last year was. So this year we're getting rain. We're right. making up for it, right? Yeah, we're making January, up for it, exactly. February, yeah. Bonnie has me chuckling because she said, I've never seen people so excited to get a shot. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? Reminds me of taking our kids to the pediatrician, and that was not what they oh wanted my gosh. to do. Yeah. No, they hated shots. Really. Well, yeah, everybody did. Yeah. But, oh, yes, the wind was crazy yesterday. Oh, Roof geez. damage, oh no. Oh, <gasps> what? Oh, I'm behind. A I'm lady clinging to a light pole? I mean, it was some serious oh, wind. No. I hope she stayed on the light pole. It was okay. I hope so too. Yeah. Trees and flowers are confused. Yeah, they are. Yeah. It was gracious. Was lots and lots of stuff there. Yeah. So no wonder we had some issues. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. Thank you to all the kids that um, painted rocks for outside this morning. I laid them out on the pathway. And everyone that came to the 8 o'clock service was able to look at the hearts and the love that all of our students our gave church us school, today. Our church yes. school, yes. kids and the so teachers funny. put together some painted rocks with hearts for Valentine's Day. And they're, they're all along the walkway up to the church now. So it's a beautiful addition. This, this space, I, I got to tell you, we are so blessed. I, I can still remember over five years ago, coming here for the very first time to meet the vestry and get interviewed for this gig. And, and I was impressed with the space then, and over these years as I've lived here, we just keep making it more and more of our own home. And we keep making changes like we do in our own homes, and you know, we rejiggered some of the office space, and we've done some things, and we've actually, uh, I'll do this on a live stream probably this week, we've, we've really upped our, our parish library game, we have a, a wonderful theological library now, which we'll make available to anybody who wants to come check some things out. More to follow on that, but <laughs> the labyrinth continues to grow. We've got a new tree down there. We've got some other stuff. We've got those wonderful benches. We are so blessed to have this, this space. And even though we can't occupy this space right now, I know, I get it. I feel it too. Even though we can't occupy it right now, we are still blessed to have this space because this pain is temporary and it will pass and we will gather again and this space will continue to serve us. So just huge, huge blessings. Right. I took pictures, so maybe I'll send them to oh, Gina and she can show the kids where they are. Oh, that's so great. Come by, that's great. come by Walk the Labyrinth. It's a heart, you can walk right. through Valentine's right. Day today. Oh yeah, I don't know about that. The Labyrinth yeah. is heart shape. It's a perfect that's way it. to go oh. and uh, spend your Valentine's oh, Day. Watch the sunset. Go, uh, go watch the lab. Go walk the labyrinth. Sit yeah. On the bench. It's all good. I've seen a lot of comments about uh, beard contest. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, typically in November we have a, a beard co growing contest, and uh, Jeff Coleman and I tend to be the the sort of the stalwarts, and other people will parachute in from year to year, and we see who can grow the beard the best, and. We have people donate money to uh, to a charity or one of our outreach ministries, uh, but we decided not to do that this year because I don't know COVID. Right, uh, and, and the mask covers and the beard. mask covers the beards up anyway. Yeah. So that is another thing that we have given up for the time. But I really feel confident that by this uh, coming November we'll have that. Hmm. And in fact, I'm so confident that we are on our way out of this that uh, we just booked a trip to Ireland. Or I should say, dad my dad booked a trip to Ireland, Ireland for us, and, said, Come with and us. Uh, we're going to go there in August. So we are super excited about that, and uh, that will be a return engagement for us and a new experience for my brother and dear sister-in-law. So we're, we're excited, and we know that good days are ahead of us, brothers and sisters. That's the point. Good days are ahead of us. So I mentioned briefly in the service about Ash Wednesday. Let me expand a little bit. Uh, it is Ash Wednesday, but this year, owing to COVID, we will not, 
underscore not, be imposing ashes. So you will not come here with a big old schmear on, it, on your forehead. That is part of the challenge of COVID. We can't get too close to one another. And for some people, that, that's painful. Ash Wednesday is about ashes, after all, and it is a tangible reminder that we, are, we come from ash and we will return to ash. Having said that, the prayer book rubric is an option. It's not a requirement. We can still have a full and complete Ash Wednesday service, as indeed we will, without the imposition of ashes. In its place, I will be sprinkling holy water over the assembled congregation at the 7.30 and noon services. But I'm going to recommend to you that you give some thought to what is, what is your, your tie to the ashes. The ashes are a symbol of something larger. They're a ritual that lead us to a real discovery of what we're really doing. It's about penitence. It's about self-examination. It's about preparation for the journey to the cross. That's really what it's about. So let's not get hung up on the form so much that we miss the substance. Okay, enough preaching. Yeah. Peter did a great job preaching already. I don't have to preach anymore. But uh, someone asked yes. if they could do ashes at home. You certainly can, if that's something that really helps you to work your way into Ash Wednesday, that's fine. But as I say, think of it this way. Sometimes we give something up during Lent, other times we add something to our, our world, but in adding something, we're really giving up time that we would have spent doing something else. So everything we do is somewhat sacrificial. This year, think perhaps about sacrificing the imposition of ashes and making that part of your Lenten observance this year. It might change you, it might not, but it's certainly worth a try. Will we be able to get palms on Palm Sunday? We're already looking at it. We'll be able to get palms on Palm hey, Sunday. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, COVID has taught me, brothers and sisters, is not to make plans too far in advance. Because for the first six months of the pandemic, I'd spend the whole morning making plan A, B, C, and D, and in the afternoon, I would throw them all in the trash barrel and start making plans E, F, G, and H. And I finally realized all I was doing was wasting a lot of my time and making myself very frustrated. Yeah. So I don't plan terribly far in advance. And that's actually been very freeing for me, which is kind of one of the learnings I'm taking from COVID. Uh, but I will tell you, in one way, shape, or form, yes, we will find a way to get palms to people for Palm Sunday. We actually found a way to do it last year, too. So even if we can't gather here in the building, we'll still have the outside service, we'll do some different things. And if you're still not comfortable, we totally understand that, we will find a way to leave palms out in the courtyard, excuse me, so that people can come and pick them up at your convenience. Right, because that's, you're not touching someone directly with a palm palm. So that's why you can do that. Right, they'll be blessed and sprinkled and then it will be self-serve. I'll have them spread along the table so you're only picking up your individual one and there's no person-to-person -person contact. These are all the crazy things we have to think about. I joked to the eight o'clock congregation as we were getting ready for Eucharist, as I was sanitizing my hands and putting on rubber gloves, I said, I wonder if there's now a, a symposium or a full year course in seminary about proper glove and sanitization uh, preparation. It's, uh, it's, it's not something that they teach us, but we find a way. This is of course the year of innovation. Yeah, okay. Trish is going on vacation right. in October. Yeah, people are looking to get yeah. things moving again. And I love that. Carol's going to Iowa. That's in April. That's wonderful. Beth says something about going to Iceland. Yes. Yeah, there you That's go. That's figured. That, yes. What an adventure. She loves those adventures. She is. Yeah. Yes, and before somebody asks, I will also tell you that uh, you've heard nothing about it because we're not having it. We will not be having a Shrove Tuesday celebration, right. no pancake supper. We're not going to burn the palms from last year to make the ashes for this year since we're not imposing ashes. Mm -hmm. But we will have our Ash Wednesday celebrations. In addition to all that, we will also be offering a Lenten study series this year, which is going to be led by our very own resident apostle, Peter Steinbrenner. And that's going to be on a, a wonderful book by a Dutch priest named Henri Nguyen called With Burning Hearts. And it's, a, it's an exploration of 
the Eucharist and how we all come together in the Eucharist. Peter, if you want to tell some of the details. Well, basically, we'll start, uh, we'll go for five Tuesdays, starting a week from Tuesday. Uh, we'll start at 6.30 uh, in the evening and be done at 8 o'clock. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, get, you can go on the website and ask me the questions. Um, and there's about 18 people signed up already, so it's going to be a big, pretty good-sized group. It's going to be That's on wonderful. Zoom, right? A Zoom conference. Zoom conference, yep. Yeah, Zoom. So we'll send out a link probably a couple three days before the, nice. the first session. Then we should read what the first chapter. Yep. Every, if you sign up, I'll send you some instructions. That'll yeah, help. All right. The first instruction is to read the first chapter. Buy the book, read the first chapter. And if you if you want it, Peter's email is in the uh, in the event that's listed on Facebook. So if you're watching us on Facebook now, you have access to get all that yeah. stuff. And if worse comes to worse and you can't find any of that, send an email to me and I'll make sure it gets taken care of for you. So people are talking about pancakes on Tuesday. This is this just come to me off the top of my head. I'll tell you what we'll do. If you're gonna make pancakes for yourselves on Tuesday, wonderful. Take a picture of your yes. pancakes. We're gonna put a post out on Facebook uh, sometime uh, Tuesday evening. And you can all attach your pictures of your pancakes in the comment section. And that way we can all sort of share our pancake creativity with one another. Mm -hmm. So that might mean up in your game a little bit. Oh. Mickey Mouse pancakes, heart-shaped pancakes, <laughs> blueberries, raspberries, a little chocolate, whatever, whatever works for you. But uh, just another way for us to sort of be in relationship with one another. We look for those opportunities now. And, and I think that is another learning that we're taking from the pandemic is not just how much we miss our relationships, but how precious it is to find those opportunities. We, we take them for granted when we see each other week in and week out, but when we don't, it, they become that much more precious. Oh, we got people going all over. Yeah, the place. I mean, Spartans, you know, Egypt, Jordan, and Israel. Oh, yeah. People are looking forward to travel, even the planning of travel. We yes. We weren't able to do any travel last year, so. Dina wants waffles instead. Dina, how did I know you'd be the rebellious one? <laughs> you with the rainbow colored hair? Yes, you could have waffles, Fancy. my dear. <laughs> yeah. I'm with Dina. Yeah, you're a waffle man. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Like no, the, the, the link, relax everybody, the link for the Zoom has not been sent yeah. out yet. That's not Peter's fault, that's mine because I haven't created it yet. Uh, you will get it in plenty of time. It's not Trust us. the following week. You just have to make sure you're on the list so that we can email it to you. Yes. People really are excited about this class. Yeah. This is excellent. It is, it's good. This we is good stuff. Class. So, yeah. This is really good stuff. Hmm. I don't know, did we do any new sayings? Because last year was the year of what? Well, last year was a year of engagement. engagement. This is the year of innovation. innovation. Here we go. So we have not come up with no. new so, new no slogans slogan. or signs or any of that kind of stuff yet. But the Committee on Gratitude is ever resourceful and That's always right. is, is plotting and scheming. The whole bread delivery thing. By the way, my, my huge and abundant thanks, not just to the people who break the bread and the people who delivered it. They are awesome and wonderful. But I want to single out all the members of the Committee on Gratitude. They get together on a monthly basis. They talk about this kind of stuff. This literally came up, and we put it all together in something under three weeks. Uh, it was like, let's do this. It was almost like the old Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. Hey, let's put on a show in the barn. Cool, let's do it. And it, all kinds of stuff happened. And, uh, and it did. And it worked, and it was wonderful. And the best part was, the bread was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Marsha Blackman baked the one that we had, and it was tasty. Delicious. And as good as the bread was, I think even more sweet was just that little moment of interaction that people got to have. So mm -hmm. it was it was a blessing all the way around. Committee on Gratitude, though, has never let grass grow under their feet. I'm sure at the next meeting they're going to say, wow, wasn't that great? Mm -hmm. What can we do next? So stay tuned, Ryan. You never know what's coming. No, Athena, if you just click on the like thing on Facebook, that doesn't mean you're registered. You need to send an email to Peter. That's, how you do, that's a good question. That, that, is, a good question. that is a really good question. Yeah. I can't count all the Facebook likes. I have to, we have to get the email. Right. Yes, Carol has a really good question, and this one boggled my mind for a while, too. They've tried to explain it. I don't quite get it. 
Kathy and Peter Steinbrenner share one email address. I have a separate one also. Oh. Okay, oh. sure, sure, sure. Do that might have something you? to do with Peter's organizational skills. I'm not making that. <laughs> I'm just wondering. I'm casting no aspersions. <laughs> She's the one telling me, hey, so and so just sent you an email. Yeah, but, but, uh, but then you got it covered on both sides. But yeah, that's, that's how it works. So get the get them an email, and uh, we'll get you in there. That email goes back to about 1984. They have email back. Yes, they did. You were special. Yeah, that was early on. <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't know. Really <laughs> Mid eighties. Email address. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that modem sound? You know, yes. the connecting sound. Jeez, we've you ever taken the handset and putting it into the modem? Yep. Oh, wow. We're old, okay, hon? Stop. Yep. 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 Yeah. I remember using the internet when I didn't even know it was the internet. I remember being in the college library and thinking how cool it was to sit in Amherst, Massachusetts and be communicating with people at, uh, at Stanford across the country through this computer thingy. How cool is this? Yeah. Little did I know I was on what was to become the internet. Yep. We don't use it, we just know what it is. Right. Well, my parents probably used it way long before, after it was. Your parents the still don't use it. They what haven't been. I know. So, lobby disk. Mm -hmm. Oh, my time. All right. Like well, it's a foreign language. Lots of abundant thanks to all the Committee on Gratitude and all the bread people. Yeah. We, we're doing some cool stuff here at Epiphany. I'm excited about the education that uh, Peter's going to have for us. And uh, just as a little teaser, I'm, I'm pondering another, another program that might come up sometime after Easter. Uh, I'm reading this really interesting Richard Rohr book and awesome. how it intersects. Uh, I, full disclosure, uh, my undergrad degree is in sociology, of all things. I know, don't ask. Um, but I, I'm sort of pondering how I take Maslow's hierarchy of needs and combine it with this Richard Rohr stuff and turn it into a, uh, a little book discussion class. So uh, stay it's tuned, that can come along too. Yeah. I think that would be kind of fun. It's gonna be an interesting year, the year of innovation. <laughs> the year of innovation, that's right. I think that'd be good. That's absolutely right. Uh, I, no one has asked on the live stream, which kind of boggles my mind, but I got many messages over the last few days from people about, hey, did you see that the governor is changing the, the in-person requirements? Yes, in fact, I did. Yeah. Uh, I have not, however, heard anything yet from the bishop or the standing committee. I'm sure they are looking at the same thing and making some decisions and making some plans. What I can tell you is what I've been telling you all along. As soon as I know something, I will communicate it. I won't keep this to myself. I will be shouting it from the rooftops. We have abundant ways to communicate information to all y'all, and I will find a way to do that. I want you in here as much as you want to be in here. So, as soon as I know, you'll know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Rosalie says, yeah, Kristen McAtheny delivered her bread, and the people at the reception desk are still talking about that church that delivered the bread. Wow, what a thing. I wonder if they got a piece. <laughs> Knowing Rosalie, they probably did. Yeah, you bet she should. You know, she, she has this sort of gruff exterior, but it's all an act. She's just a marshmallow inside. But don't tell her I said that. It'll ruin her reputation. Uh, yep. Aww. I love this parish. All right, my friends. I think that uh, we're pretty talked out here. Yeah, I agree. I'm yes. praying that we can do something for Holy Week too, my friends. Yep. Believe me. Believe me, believe me, believe me, I am. Uh, we will have more time to plan than we did last year, so we'll find some ways to make Holy Week special and and poignant, and, and it might be a very new thing for us this year. Last year was a very different one, wasn't it? I think we all took different things from Holy Week. This year, I think it will be the same. It will be a different experience for us, and maybe we'll learn some new things. Um, so that. We're going to innovate. We're going to yeah. try things. Some things are going to work. Some things are not going to work. 
But through it all, we're going to continue to be in relationship with one another and with God. And that is, after all, what we're called to be. And that sounds to me like a really good segue to say, God bless you. God love you. Have a great week. And we'll see you tomorrow morning for the live stream. Happy Valentine's Day to one and all.